Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you can see it and you can purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. And today we are discussing the Omega Speedmaster Reduced Michael Schumacher, reference 3510.12.00, launched in 1996 alongside its Blue and red iterations, the primary colored Speedy Reduced, were in fact advertised in conjunction with then rising star Michael Schumacher. Then rising star Michael Schumacher, then of Benetton. Of course, the timepiece on my wrist can also refer to any era of Schumacher's career, or if you're not into racing or F1 or Schumacher, it's just a splendid mid sized motorsports chrono with tons of character. Now, the watch on my wrist, of course, sits on a 16 centimeter circumference wrist. The model, reasonably sized at 39 millimeters, is not a small watch, nor is it a large one. It is chunky, as you can see in profile, 12.4, but because of the cantilevered tachymeter bezel, it appears to be thicker than it is. It's actually quite svelte. Lug to lug, it's a nice compact and traditional 44.6 millimeters, and between the lugs, 18 millimeters. You can see the watch on the wrist has a charming old school, almost vintage appearance. And in fact, this watch, now 22 years old, is getting up there. It has an original tritium faded dial we'll discuss in a moment. But first, we need to discuss another wonderful period piece, the bracelet. Now, this is a sporting bracelet that nevertheless evokes the Rolex president in no small regards. As you can see, individually, the links do look an awful lot like a Rolex president. It's actually known as the 1469 bracelet with 811 end links, staggered link size, staggered link alignment, as you can see, staggered link finish. But you also note that there's an intermediate polished portion buffering the center links and the flanking links that does set it apart from the president. Turn it over and you can see that there are large gaps on the underside to avoid pinching skin or pulling hair. This watch was considered to be a Volks chrono back in the day, so of course it used pin sleeves rather than screws for sizing and the clasp stamped and in excellent condition you can hear just how crisp the closure is featuring the speedmaster script as well as the omega logo and many individual anchoring points so you can use your strap tool to fine tune this one of course the case itself familiar to speedmaster and seamaster fans with lyre shaped lugs with flared polished bevels and then thin mid case with satin finish that runs longitudinally you'll note that there is a satin finished inner circumference to the tack, but then outboard, it's all of high polish, giving way to a black tachymeter scale. Now, you can use this if you are a fan of motorsports to gauge the speed of a car over a standing kilometer or a standing mile. It doesn't feature units, so you can decide. Of course, the dial itself is an iteration of the long-running Omega Racing Dial theme with the checkered flag outboard to make it easier to read seconds and fractions of a second, this dating back to the late 1960s. This 1996 release is probably the most exuberant of the three. The primary color, Michael Schumacher's in red and blue, perhaps a bit more more low key. This one feels distinctly more tropical in the sense that it would be right at home in Miami or Key West. This is a watch for the Sunset Strip. This is not a watch for New York or Philadelphia. This is a timepiece that's also rife with character. You've got the racing track outboard. You have faded tritium loom on the hour indices. You have a yellow lacquer, and it is a gloss yellow lacquer. You can see it gleaming on the sub-registers from this angle. All of that with red hands for chronos seconds, minutes, and hours, and blackened hands for the time of day, the hours, minutes, and the seconds. Also note that the center of the hands for hours and minutes have been lacquered yellow, so they seem to float above the dial. Also appreciate the fact, and you can see the mini, the mini Omega logo at center. This is a true plexiglass crystal. As you can see, off-axis, this gives you the same kind of distortion effects you'll get on the full-sized moon watch, so it is true to form in that regard. The watch featuring an Omega Caliper 3220 inside, it's based on an ETA 2894, so it's a modular chronograph, which is why the crown and the pushers are not in line. The chronograph module is atop. Automatic winding with a 42-hour power reserve, 28,800 vibration per hour beat rate, vertical clutch chronograph. It also features stop seconds. All of that, and it is a tank tough movement. A timepiece that has tons of character whether you're into Shumi or not. Heck, you could have been a 
David Coulthard, Mika Hakkinen, or Heinz Harald Frensen fan and still dug this watch back in the 90s because it's just a charming cheer-up watch. It immediately brightens your day. Now the timepiece does have service replacement Luminova hands, so I'm going to give you a loom shot so you can see the difference between the dead dial and the Luminova hands. You can see this watch by the light of day and make it yours on the watch box. Speedy reduced Schumacher by night. As you can see, the tritium almost completely dead. Original dial.